Hi and welcome to Export Kit. In this example we're going to demonstrate how we can create animated hover buttons using Export Kit and Adobe XD with a little bit of CSS and you'll see here that we have a color change, a fade in, a slide to right, slide to left, slide down and slide up and this is very quick and easy to create. Now we're going to be using an external CSS file and what we've done is we've localized it within our export folder so that way we can reference it pretty quickly. So let's just open up another tab so we can begin to work with our XD design and test as we go. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to need to do is create our button. So let's start by making a title and we're going to give it a folder uh, just to basically organize our content much better. Once we have our title, uh, what we can do is create a simple background. Now we're going to name this animation simply because we're going to be animating it. Uh, what we've done is we gave it a fill color of black and a border of red and this will uh, correlate with what you saw in the original output. Now if we export this as is, what we will end up with, and let's just go ahead and look, is basically a static uh, content in essence. So you'll see here there's not much we can do with it simply because it's purely static. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at modifying this some more. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to basically create a few styles so we can manage uh, our buttons better. So let's go ahead and let's remove the border because we're going to add that in our CSS styles. So uh, let's go ahead and let's add a style to our actual color button. And you'll see here that we gave it a style name button. This will allow us to control how our folders are rendered within our CSS style. So let's take a look. So now what we've done is we've created our CSS styles folder and we actually added a default style. And this default style, what it has is basically the back black background along with the red border. So now that we have our style for button and our button folder, uh, sorry, our folder with uh, CSS style of button, what this will do is now correlate the CSS style with our actual content. So if we remove our uh, CSS style and we render as is, you'll see that we'll just have the text. Now this text is without any uh, background design for the border, so let's just add that in. So once we add back our CSS style for our button and we export, you'll note the difference. So you'll see that once again our red border was reapplied to our content. So let's go a little bit further. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to take control of the actual title content. Uh, we had it red in our output. So we're going to add a style for title. Now if we were to export this as is without any further information, what will happen is that there will be no L, uh, sorry, no styles or properties from XD applied to that element simply because we've created a style. What this will do is look for something defined within the CSS styles to apply. So let's continue. Now we've added a title within our CSS styles and the default is red. So if we export this now as is, you'll note that it will now take on the red appearance because we added the CSS style to it. So there we go. So this now mimics uh, the hover button that we have within our output. So let's go ahead and let's continue. Now what we want is we want the hover mode, or state I should say, of the actual button to change the title. So the title in this case is going to be white. So when we roll over the title, you're going to note a white, ba uh, sorry, a change from color red to white. So let's go ahead and let's test this. So 
So you'll see here that once we hover over the button, it will change the text itself from red to white. So this is looking uh, pretty decent so far. So let's go ahead and let's add a few more tricks up our sleeves per se. Now, what we also want to do is take control of the actual animation. So in this case, what we're doing, and we're going to create a few different buttons, is we're going to add a color style to our actual animation. And this is where we're doing the color change that we saw in our original output. Uh, there's a few more things that we're going to do, and we're also going to start adding a little bit of CSS shortly. So let's continue. Now we also want to call this a uh, default style of animation itself. This will allow us to control all the styles uh, globally plus have individual classes applied to each animation itself. So if we continue, what we're doing now is we're adding an animation style which is red. And what this will do is this will color the default background of the button completely red. So in essence, we're just going to see a red square simply because we haven't added any of the CSS uh, animation properties to this element. So let's go ahead and let's just export just so we can test. So you'll see here that it's basically a red box, but when we hover over, you'll see the white text simply because we have that uh, rollover state defined within our XD file. So if we go back to XD, and let's continue with this. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to now actually add a link to our style sheet that we previously defined so that what we can do is add uh, CSS styles within the actual content. Now we could have created a, the pure code within uh, our XD document, but it might be a large file. So this way we can just link, relatively speaking, anything we'd like, uh, basically in a localized uh, framework. So we have our code layer here, sorry, our code layer tag on our text layer and we basically just created a link tag for our style sheet and it is referencing our CSS uh, file which is located just within our export folder itself. Now if we go to our CSS file there are a few quick and easy things that we're going to create so we can house our button animations. So let's go ahead and do these. So the first thing we're going to need is our button class and we're going to give it a position relative because we're controlling the content within. We're going to hide the overflow. This way we can animate objects to fly in and we're going to ensure that the cursor is always a pointer so it looks like a button. Next thing we're going to do is to add a little bit of animation to our content, we're going to give it a quick transition and we're going to do this for all elements within the button itself. Now if we go back to our XD file, <coughs> you'll see we added a style for color. So this is going to be the first animation that we create. So if we, we create color, what we're going to do is the base is going to have a black background. Now you'll remember in our output that we saw a red square. So what we're going to have to do is redefine this uh, in essence as a black color. And the next step we're going to do is when we hover over the button, and you'll see here our CSS state. Now you'll note this does look very similar to uh, our states within XD. You'll see button hover. And this is because we do our best to use uh, true text content that is registered within the actual environment itself. So because this is CSS and this is how the states uh, in essence reference, this is what we allow within your layer names. So you'll see within button hover the color the color changes to gray. So this is going to give a quick animation of a gray color change uh, to our content. So let's just save this. And what we can do is we can actually just refresh. My apologies, I didn't re-export with the new content. So let's re-export with the linkage to the CSS file. So now what we have is a black background, and when we hover over it, you'll note that it turns gray, which is defined within our CSS styles. So let's add a few more buttons so we can test uh, basically our maximum potential. So let's go ahead. 
Now we're going to add a fade button and what this will do, and you'll note here that what we did in the style was rather than color, we changed it to fade. So this way we can control that style independently. So within our fade, let's add a few more styles for this. So fade, let's change the opacity to zero. And on hover, we're going to change the opacity to one. So this is in essence a fade in. Let's add a few more buttons. So we're going to add a slide right. And again, what we've done is we've changed the style that's actually applied. So slide right. While we're at it, let's create another uh, button for sliding left. So we have a slide right. What this is doing is it's changing the left index of the actual element or position. And it's basically moving it off uh, screen or basically off the parent element. So slide left, we're going to want uh, basically the left position of the element to be 100%. So it's going to be uh, far towards the right. And the animation itself, what this will do is that when we hover over the button, slide right and slide left will, in essence, move the left position back to zero. So this will animate the content back towards its original position. So let's take a look at this in the output. So we have our buttons here. Let's go ahead and export. So this is our color button. This is our fade button. This is our slide left button. And this is our slide right button. And you'll see that the CSS that we use to create this is very minimal. We're simply starting off in one position or property, and on hover, we're ending in another. So it's very trivial that you can create almost any animation you'd like. So let's add a few more uh, just to keep going. So let's add a slide down. Uh, and in essence, we're always changing the style so we can control this globally. And let's add a slide up. So we've added both of these buttons, and we're now going to create the classes for these so we can control them. So let's go. We're going to create a slide down. The top is going to be, in essence, negative 100% uh, of its position. And slide up, this is going to be now 100% of its position downward. So it will be off, off screen of the actual element. And if we actually add the animation, what we're doing is on hover, both slide down and slide up, the top will return to its initial position. So once we save this and we go back to our XD file, we can re-export. And you'll see that now we've created a few different animations using Adobe XD, Export Kit, and a little bit of CSS. And the CSS was not difficult uh, whatsoever. Now, there's a lot of potential to customize this to your particular requirements. But in essence, the door is wide open. Have fun.